We're now going to look at the data type called string. A string is an ordered or a sequential collection of characters. And to create a string in Python, we use the quote symbol. And so, for example, I could say quote and then the sequence of characters H-E-L-L-O and then another quote and notice that that evaluates to the value H-E-L-L-O, the quoted string. Now in Python we can use either single quotes or we can use double quotes. And so notice that double quoting the characters H-E-L-L-O gives me the same result, the string hello. The reason for allowing this is so that we can actually have strings that contain the single quote or the double quote. So for example, if we wanted to create the string it's it apostrophe s, we could use the double quote it single quote s double quote and that would allow me to represent a string that contains one of the quotes by using the other form of quote uh, as its delimiter. Now one thing that's important is to realize that a quoted string is very different from an identifier. If I were just to type in the identifier hello, I'm going to get an error. Why? Because hello, in that case, is interpreted as an identifier. And so what the Python shell does is try to find out what is the value or what is the data object that that identifier refers to. It wants to interpret hello as a variable. Because hello has never been bound or has never been made to refer to a data object, I then get the error that it's not defined. So there's a very, very important difference between a word that is a quoted string, that is a sequence of characters as a data object, and an identifier, which is the name for a piece of data. In order to use strings, we need to be able to understand some of the basic operations that strings provide. And the first two operations are going to be operators that we've seen before, but we've used them with numeric data. The first operator is the plus symbol, and remember that that stands for addition when we are working with numeric data. With strings, the plus symbol performs what is called concatenation. So if I take the string dog and add it to the string house, the result is the new string doghouse. In other words, the addition operator working on strings adds the two strings, which in a sense glues the strings together into a new string with the two words put together, no spaces in between. And so if I have a string with three characters and a string with five characters, my new string is going to have eight characters. Now, the plus operator, because it can work on different kinds of data, now becomes a very important operator in that we have to understand the context that the plus operator appears in. If the plus operator appears in between two numbers, it's going to be interpreted as addition numerically. But as we just saw, if it appeared between two strings, it's going to be string concatenation. In a similar way, the star operator can also be used with numeric data and also with string data. And with string data, the star operator performs what is referred to as a repetition. And so if I take the string dog and multiply it by five, what I'm asking to do is to repeat the string dog five times. And you can see that what I end up with is, in a sense, the concatenation of five occurrences of the string dog. So the repetition operator is very useful for uh, repeating occurrences of a string, and the concatenation operator then is simply able to add two strings together. A third function that's very, very useful is to be able to ask how long a string is. And to do that, I just use what's called the length function or the len function. So len of the string dog is going to return three because there are three characters in dog. Len of the string dog multiplied by, or the string dog multiplied by five is going to give 15. Why? because dog has three characters. When I repeat it five times, I get three times five, or 15 characters total. Now the final thing we're going to look at is the similarity between 
string data objects and numeric or uh, Boolean data objects, and that is that they can certainly be used in assignment statements. So for example, I could let the variable my name refer to the string DAVID. When I do that, as is usual with an assignment statement, nothing is returned, but the value now of the variable my name is the string David. And so if we look at this pictorially as we've done before, what we've now accomplished is to create a variable called my name, which is a reference to a data object, but now this data object is not a simple data object like for or true, but rather it's a sequence, uh, a sequence of characters, in this case a sequence of five characters. So evaluating my name gives me the data object that my name refers to, and as we can see then, we end up with the value David being returned. And, as you would expect, identifiers that are now bound or refer to data objects that are strings can be used with the functions we've talked about. So, for example, we can ask for the length of my name. And what happens is, my name refers to the string David, so the length of David is 5. And I can ask for my name to be repeated three times. And I'll get the string David, David, David with no spaces. And likewise, I can concatenate, so I could say the string hello, and then concatenate that with my name, and the result is going to be hello David. Now, one last thing for us to consider. Notice that in this case, the two strings were connected together with concatenation, and there's no space. The space is a character, and I can use that space as part of a string. So, for example, I could have said, let's let the string H-E-L-L-O space concatenated with my name. In that case, now, notice that the first string, H-E-L-L-O space, has six characters. The space character is a valid character in that sequence. And so now, when I use that concatenation, you can see that the space appears between hello and David. It's really part of that first string, and in the concatenation, it simply shows up as a space in between.